I mean, it it definitely has changed. Uh, as you already know, like the market's gone crazy everywhere. Hey, investors, Bradley here from Watson Estates, and you're listening to the largest, fastest growing podcast for Toronto real estate on iTunes, Spotify, and Google Podcasts. I'm glad you could join us today on our show. I'm excited because we like to kind of keep in the loop with what's going on in our local market here in Toronto. But we also want to talk to investors that are doing well. A lot of people, because of COVID, are considering outside markets. So today, we're going to jump over to the region of Niagara, and we're going to talk to Spencer Giles and Ashley Antidormi. They have, since 2018, built a portfolio of from zero to 18 doors through their investment strategy and specifically focusing, for the most part, on short-term rentals. And as property managers of Travel Lux Property Management, we're able to talk a little bit about some of the successes that they've had out there. We talk about some of the biggest opportunities right now in that region in short-term rentals, as well as some of the biggest threats that they face. But we had a good conversation. So if you're considering investing in short-term rentals or considering going outside of the GTA to grow and build your portfolio, I think you're going to get a lot of value out of this show. When you do, please consider sharing this on Instagram. You can tag us at Watson Estates. I know you're going to love it. You can tag them as well, Spencer and Ashley on Instagram. But we had a wonderful conversation. Enjoy the show. Spencer, Ashley, thank you for joining us on the show. How are you guys doing? Doing well. How are you? Awesome. Very good. Very good. I'm excited to have you guys. You are the first guest I think I've had out from the Niagara region. So I'm really excited to talk a little bit about the way you guys have deployed your investment strategy and you guys have really been taking over that city in the last few years. So we're going to talk a little bit about that, but to get us started, tell me about you guys. Sure. Uh, So we started about three years ago. Um, Well, I actually purchased my first home in 2011, but I had no idea what I was doing. I just wanted to get out of my parents' house. I rented the top three bedrooms to students. I lived in the basement. Um, and then when we met is when we actually got into real estate. Yeah. So I, I, uh, I didn't purchase my first property, um, until about three years ago. It was with a, a partner who uh, had a good friend who, who had, had a lot of student rentals. I think he had four or five at the time. And we kind of met for uh, a beer one day and I said, what are you doing? Like, this sounds like it's going really well. And kind of explained, you know, the numbers and, and how, you know, it, it's really, you know, helped him out financially. And I was super in, interested in it. So we ended up getting enough to get my first down payment and, and partnered with him and went a different route than the student rentals that he was doing. We, we tried out short term rentals. And at this time, I really had no idea uh, what to expect from it. But we had a, a mutual friend who had about four, I think it might have been six or seven, actually, at the time, and he swore by them. And he kind of showed us his numbers and we were sold. Uh, and then, yeah, we, we, we bought it as a, a value add play as well. So the, we like to use like the Burr method. So we did a little, we did that first, we renovated it, made it really nice, obviously furnished it well, and it ended up doing extremely well on Airbnb to the point where we, uh, you know, the next property that we purchased well, was the same thing. And it was actually on the same street, just down the road from the first one that I got. And that's pretty much how it started. And it just catapulted from there. We haven't really looked back. We've purchased uh, a few long-term rentals. So like six unit, a couple six unit apartment buildings. And uh, yeah, we've just been growing that over the last three years. And just using the equity in each of the homes to just kind of take it, make it better, take the equity out, roll it into something else and honestly continuing from there. Very good. Okay. Got, I got a gist of it. It's interesting because I think you guys might be one of the first that I've heard the Burr deployed on the short-term rental side. A lot of people are doing it long-term rental. And I guess one of the questions for you, Spencer, quickly is that first one you did, were you a managing partner? Were you active in any way or were you leveraging the other partner? And because obviously he had experience in that, but I'm curious how that dynamic worked for your first place. Yeah, we were 50-50 right down the middle. Uh, so he had obviously more experience with the renovation side. Um, you know, it was my first property. So there were some benefits with that. Um, so yeah, we, we split 50% of the work, 50% of the, uh, you know, the income and the down payment. And yeah, I just learned a lot through him. And um, that's, that's how that first one went. Cool. I think, I think that's a, a lot of people say, you know, get involved in partnership. Obviously, um, as we're hearing, Ashley, like you've done real estate generally, but once you want to get serious about it, having that partner makes a big difference. And I love that you guys have lived by that. And you've seen that side of it, of kind of building off of what somebody else has already put years of learning into and been able to grow. 
Very good. Very good. So today, where do you guys stand as far as your portfolio? And where are they located generally? You want to answer that? Sure. So we have uh, six single family homes, right? Yeah. Six single family homes um, located in Niagara, uh, Niagara on the Lake. So St. Catharines, Niagara on the Lake and Ellicottville, New York, actually are our new ones we added this year. And then our long term buildings are out in uh, St. John, New Brunswick. Oh, wow. So you guys have stretched out. You've been stretching out this year. We have, yeah. Have you found COVID's changed anything for you or it's just sped up the process a little bit with prices? Yeah, I mean, it's, it definitely has changed. Uh, as you already know, like the market's gone crazy everywhere. So that's def it definitely helped from an equity standpoint, the properties that we had pre-COVID. Um, from a short-term rental perspective, we've seen record numbers in the last year and a half because people are just dying to get out of their house. And, you know, with, with all these restrictions on international travel, people are forced to do, you know, little weekend getaways or, you know, a lot of people that have four or five weeks of vacation, they're, instead of going down for a weekend, they're staying for a week or two. So we definitely saw record numbers um, on the short-term rental and side. people can work from anywhere now. So we have people coming down to work for weeks at a time because they can. Yeah. yeah. And then from, you know, from the long-term investing approach, we're kind of finding like all those, what used to be really quiet markets are, are not so quiet anymore. Um, like the St. John's and the East coasts of, of Canada, uh, you know, three or four years ago, you used to be able to go in on from a cash flow perspective and, and clean up just really anything you wanted. Now it's a lot more competitive. It's fascinating that you guys have so many single family homes. So, so these are the ones you're Airbnb being, it sounds yeah. like, yeah. are you, Minus are one, you worried yeah. that with COVID all of kind of the golden age of Airbnb right now, locally, are you worried that on the tail end things will change or do you No, I'm seeing a head shake. No. No, personally, we're not. This area is getting bigger and bigger for international tourists, for wine country. Um, and there's only so much space right in Niagara and the Lakes. Even the properties in St. Catharines and Niagara Falls are doing really, really well for people wanting to either go down to the falls and they're not making any more waterfalls. So that will stay a pretty big tourist attraction. Um, and especially Niagara and the Lake is just growing. We, we haven't seen it slow down. And even through the low season, we have a lot going on in the region in terms of long-term work with the canal, the hospital. We get a lot of, and we'll, we'll kind of uh, pivot more to like medium-term rentals and we'll have people in for 20, 28 days at a time. Um, and there are just big companies with workers who are, who are working, which is awesome to fill the slow season. Would if let's say you were to pivot these um, single family homes and just pardon my ignorance because I'm in out where in my neck of the woods you can't do this but I'm curious would those cash flow if they were long term or is the Airbnb strategy the way you're overcoming that hurdle? Yeah, that's a great question. So we're very risk adverse people. Mm -hmm. um, so the properties that we did start out with and buy, um, I would say ninety five percent of the portfolio that we own, if we needed to go to the long term rental strategy. They would cash flow not nearly as much as airbnb not even close. but yeah. you know it, it would be enough that you know barring a major catastrophic uh you know renovation needed or repair they would be good um but yeah obviously with short-term rental it's it's not even a comparable it's is, is that still like, the case though or is that something you saw a few years ago that now is all but deleted <laughs> so it is still the case uh, okay. they're, harder, they're harder to find not gonna lie like yeah. location means more now than it does before for yeah. sure like, like you want to make sure that if you're going to rent it say on airbnb that's going to make sense for the amount that you're buying it for because you're right the price is skyrocketed yeah i mean you can still find places but you're pretty close to that break even point now so again you are going to buy something and have that as a backup plan make sure the house is solid um if you're buying something that has you know a very old house that could run into a lot of potential problems i would suggest to stay away um but yeah that that is the the risk now and that's why you're seeing more people starting to turn these into short-term rentals which i mean it is driving the price up um but yeah it's 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 a lot more difficult now for sure so as I'm, I guess I'm reading through the lines a little bit and just thinking from an outside perspective, if I was looking for a house, my, that was just going to be designated as, as a short-term rental, chances are good that house would not be one of these categories of long-term. 
if, if it was tight. If you had a, kind of a lot of options, I think you could kind of have that strategy. So I think it's interesting as well to see you guys also tying into the, the commercial multifamily. I'm just curious for someone starting out, like someone brand new, that's also risk averse, would this strategy of looking for a short-term rental that could also long-term cash flow be viable? Or would you suggest having multiple doors as separate kind of strategies? How would you approach it today after we've seen, obviously, Niagara St. Catharines prices just go through the roof? I'm just curious. Yeah. I think that that's what's going to, that's what's going to stick long-term, right? For sure. I mean, there's definitely a few ways that you could go about it. I mean, what we see, uh, and again, with our, we actually have a management business as well uh, for short-term rentals. And we see a few of our clients, they'll buy in a pretty desirable area and they'll have multiple units. So what they'll do is let's say put like a long-term tenant in the basement or the main floor, and then they'll short-term rental the other one just to, to mitigate some of the risk. That, that's something you see a lot of people, if you're going to move in at that, like a house hacking strategy where they live in one part of the unit and either short-term rental or rent out the upstairs. Um, it really depends on the areas you buy because there are still areas in, in the Niagara pocket where you can rent it out full time and make a bit of cash flow. We're not talking like a thousand dollars plus, but you know, for sure three to $500 is definitely attainable if not more. Um, but yeah, I, I think now the more, multi-unit like duplex triplex you're seeing that is a lot more common just given the circumstances but also know that to mitigate that risk you're also going to bring down your potential earnings on airbnb or vrbr yeah. or for short-term rental you just make more when you have an entire space yeah for people especially with covid of course right? people, don't, people don't like shared spaces as much anymore but they still do we still have a few in the portfolio they that do well. that do well it's just not not as well as the single family homes where they have their own space. Yeah, no, I can hear you. And I, no doubt there will always be that kind of space, this kind of luxury short-term rental space that I think the more people come into it, the more saturated it becomes. So this kind of, this challenge, this barrier to entry actually makes it more lucrative for the people who can kind of break into that market. It's also interesting to see this transition, you know, from Toronto to Hamilton to Niagara. And there's been this ongoing theme in the news and, and, and really you guys are just a step behind Hamilton. And as transit yes. kind of comes around your way, it's only a matter of time. If you want to know where it's headed, I think that that's a very good picture of that. Um, so out of all the strategies you've had, so you've had, it sounds like what I've heard out of your initial chat there was Airbnbs um, buy, renovate, uh, I guess, for Burr, however you want to say it, Burr deals. Uh, has that been the strategy every single time? Have you had any more buy and hold? What like what are some of the things you're looking at doing these days? Yeah, I, I definitely, we, we always love value add plays because yeah. that's what's helped us to like catapult and, and continue to buy more. Uh, the more, as you know, though, from a, a financing perspective, that after acquiring so many amount of properties, that's where it gets tricky is, you know, getting that refinance and getting approved for that seventh or eighth mortgage. Um, but yeah, we, we definitely do like the value add plays, like our, our buildings out East are the same thing, they're value add plays. Um, but we do have a few in the portfolio now that are more buy and holds. Um, we just purchased a, a nice property in Niagara Lake. That's going to be a very luxurious property. It's about an acre and a half right on the vineyards um, with the ability to probably sever and build on the other half of the lot. So we're bought, we're just kind of looking like what you mentioned with Hamilton and Toronto and everything coming down this way. We just want that, that piece of land we see in, you know, five to 10 years being worth a, a lot more than it is now. So, so we are taking on a few of those, but that's not like, we're, we're, we're really careful on how we, you know, divide that portfolio. We don't want that to be a large percentage. We want to do a little bit of that, but then stick to the, the value add plays and continuing to be able to grow the portfolio there. Awesome. I was going to ask, cause you mentioned financing. And when I think of Airbnbs on, on that strategy, I very much think of student housing and this kind of challenges this hurdle of getting the refinance on the tail end. I, I'm who do you go to, to finance these deals? And like, is there, what, what do those hurdles look like? How have you been able to overcome that? Um, in your business? We have here? <laughs> you want to tackle it? Um, well, we've used the, uh, various amounts of mortgage brokers. I mean, when I yeah. say this, we use about three or four that have been pretty good. 
you have to get really creative, especially now with um, the way that banks are looking at things. I mean, two, even three years ago, it was so much easier just to, you know, use the, the, cre the creativity of a, of a good mortgage broker. But we, we deal with people that, okay, so the mortgage brokers that we deal with, they, they have a lot of clients that have these. So they're, they're usually pretty good at positioning it with the underwriters where it, it gives you your best chance of getting approved. But we've had issues where, you know, it's, it's, it's been very close to a no and we had to do like a you know, three month bank rental history and all of that. So, you know, creatively we had to get around that hurdle. And we aren't married either. So one of us is able to move out at any time into a new primary residence. And then you can change your mind after if you so need. Yeah. And then, and then now we're at the point where we're partnering like let's, let's say like JVs and you know we're very careful on who we partner with but we'll work something out where we don't go on title we still have 50 percent of the equity or sometimes we, we we deal with just money partners and we're the 100 percent managing partner um and we're not on title so that's another way we've been being able to get around it so we'll help people with you know their first airbnb and they go on title we you know since we have experience doing it we get it up and running and you know get it successful so what we benefit is we're not on title and for them, if they decide to refi, if they don't have a massive portfolio, it's usually not too hard when you only have one or two in, in the portfolio. So, so many different ways, but it's definitely challenging. I love that you said that there's, there are challenges and we've overcome them. And then you gave very real reasons and how you're able to do that. So thank you for that. I'm glad you guys didn't just kind of hide on that question. And I think that's fantastic. I think there's, I think there's two secret sauces in Ontario right now. If you can overcome these apart from finding opportunities and deals, if you find a deal, you don't have to do with it. You're stuck. I think the big one in your space specifically would be the financing. So what you just yeah. described, I think is a creative way to overcome that. The other thing would be turning tenants, right? Which you also yeah. kind of mentioned when you say, you know, primary residences allows you to do that. But I think that's where your property management side is kind of kicking in. And you've got, you guys have kind of solved those two big problems. So, and now you're bringing on joint venture partners as well. And you're able to share that. So most of the people who listen to our show, I mean, there, there's gotta be some out in Niagara region, but the vast majority are in the GTA and they're probably sitting here thinking, Hey, I want to kind of break into these markets. I like some of these strategies. What, what would be something you'd say to those folks as they're kind of considering partnerships and why have them come out in your direction and, and work with you guys and in, in your, um, your management team? Well, first of all, because everything out here is half the price, Fair. <laughs> uh, you know, land, land's a lot cheaper here than it is in, in Toronto. And, you know, there, there has been a consistent trend of more and more people coming out this way. I mean, if you take a look at our area alone, St. Catharines, five years ago, there, there were no condos. Now we have these massive two, 300 unit condos going up. So that, that kind of tells you something when you're looking at the big, big players in this area and they're doing that, they're doing that for a reason. So, you know, we're just kind of pointing out the obvious signs that, you know, we, we think there's, there's more to come and more people and there's only so much land. So at the end of the day, like we're trying to buy and hold everything. Um, and then from the other perspective is it Niagara region's a huge tourist attraction. So from a short-term rental perspective, you're getting people come here, you know, barring they open everything up again, you're getting people coming here from all over the world. So it's always going to be an area of interest. It's not so much like, uh, you know, the, the PECs of Ontario where, you know, it's more seasonal um, or like Grey Bruce area, where again, it's, it's more popular in the summer. You're getting people here all year round for like the ice wine festivals, you know, Niagara Falls is super popular. So from a short-term rental perspective, it's, it's fairly safe. And also people like the short-term rental laws in Toronto are hard and they're hard, they're hoops that are hard to jump through. Whereas in Niagara Lake, there's a permit process that's a lot easier and more manageable year after year. And once you have the permit, then you're legally able to rent. So it's not something you have to deal with. Whereas in Toronto, it's a lot harder. Yeah. That's interesting. I guess that kind of, I mean, you think of Toronto as a travel destination too, but maybe Niagara is just so dependent on travel and tourism from within the province and international that they've just 
leaned into that direction. I'm curious if that's something that will shift, but in the short term, I mean, you're dealing with, um, I, I definitely think there's an opportunity just from what you're describing. And I, and I agree, like, I think looking at it from a macro perspective, there's always been an equity play in Toronto and in the GTA, but now we're starting to experience that at a wider scale. There's talks of people being able to stay further away. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised. I think they'd be a little bat crazy, but to commute from Niagara to Toronto to work is probably also happening. <laughs> yeah, yeah. with the go train and everything. Yeah, or it's gonna yeah. Start. It's a long, it makes for a long day, but you don't have yeah. to sit in your car and drive. Maybe people would do that. Yeah. To I, live outside the city too. Yeah. yeah. I personally wouldn't, but <laughs> So from right. managing, so, so your management company for short-term rental, right? So someone's, yeah. so yeah. I've had a lot of conversations with folks who have long, like we've talked to prop, property managers who do long-term rental from a short-term rental, my understand, I guess maybe give us the idea of what that pricing looks like. I know kind of off the top of my head, but I'll let you guys kind of share. And what are some of the values that people get, um, especially if they're at a distance working with a property manager to help facilitate that Airbnb and get it at its kind of peak. Yeah. So, well, first of all, like the majority of our clients are from like the GTA area. So they've, they've purchased property down here because they've sold their townhouse and they're able to buy two or three down here. Uh, and we essentially, since we have the feet on the ground, we have the cleaning team, the maintenance, um, you know, we have the, the pricing structure down pat. We just take it and run it for them. It's really hands-off approach for them because running a short-term rental is a lot of work. And that's why we charge more than a regular long-term property management company, because you're dealing with check-ins and check-outs two to three times a week at that property. You're dealing, making sure your cleaners are showing up on time from 11 to four, those two or three times per week. You're dealing with guest issues, guest questions, uh, guest inquiries. Um, so we take care of all of that for our clients. And then any maintenance issues that comes up, we deal with as well. So if there's a leak or you know something's broken we send someone out to fix it in a timely manner before the next guest checks in so it's a lot of uh being able to move quickly on your toes and it's it's a big headache if you're trying to run it yourself and don't have a, a solid team built so that's where we have found that there's definitely a need for it because at the end of the day the the reason why you would do it is cash flow i mean you can make a, a lot of money on short-term rental versus long-term rental. So, um, you know, that's just in a nutshell, essentially what we do for our clients. We just make it hands off for them and take care of their property and, you know, deal with the guests and make it a successful uh, venture for them. And in the beginning too, we'll consult because a lot of people come to us saying, I have this house, it's empty. We've just renovated it. We'll, we'll consult on design. We won't do it, but we'll consult. And then we'll kind of come back once they're done or 80 percent done and and give our feedback there because you need to stand out especially like you mentioned before there's a lot of airbnbs going on especially in this area and you need to stand out and and look different in order to do well so we'll, we'll help in, in that stage as well yeah and we also give revenue projections so yeah. pe people that are, are actually looking they'll send us a few listings like let's say these are the properties i'm looking at i'm going to go do these showings we can actually pull data on that specific property and give them an idea of what income they're looking to inspect. So they can work their numbers backwards from there. We even send them a, a cash flow spreadsheet so they can fill it in. It's all populated. But at the end of the day, like, you know, our business isn't going to be successful unless they're making money. So we want to make sure that they're getting into the right property as well. So we do do a little bit of, I guess you can say consulting on that front uh, as well. I love, I love that handholding idea that you just described. I, I guess for guests generally, what I've seen is property managers tend to be around 10% of rent, Airbnbs are around 20% of rent, and they kind of be, or they're kind of consistent that way. But having someone that specializes in a market and some of these other hand holding techniques you're doing, I think are really wise for you guys in developing your business because you're, that's just some, that's an opportunity for me to bump an idea off of you. And the conversation is starting early. And for me as an investor, I, I would need that, especially if I was kind of foreign to this concept. I think that's really helpful. I think that's a good idea. <laughs> well, you have to, right? Yeah. It, it is. It's, it's a lot to think about, you know, and to Ashley's point, there are certain areas of Niagara treat short-term rentals differently. So we also yeah. want to make sure they're not buying in a restricted area. And mm -hmm. again, we just want to make sure that if they're investing, 
a big chunk of money that it's it's protected, right? And we work with each of our owners. Some of them are completely hands off, make all the decisions. Some want to be told when they need toilet paper and, and looking at that cost. So we have a wide range of hand holding clients, some a little more involved, some not as much involved and we're fine with that. And it was a good way for us to uh, expand our port portfolio without actually buying anything. Yeah. Okay, so let's let's summarize this all in a couple of things here. One, what is the biggest opportunity right now for doing, whether it's Airbnb or right now, what are the things that excite you the most about what you guys are doing? And then the second thing is, is what is the biggest risk or pitfall that you see people having that want to approach this strategy? I'll let either of you guys answer that. Sure. Um, so I think we're the most excited personally. We want to expand our personal portfolio into more of the multifamilies, like purchasing more of the multifamilies. They're a little more hands-off. Um, in terms of short-term rentals, obviously we love them. That is the majority of our portfolio. We built our, our business, which is running very successfully to over 20 clients. And we're looking to expand the short-term rentals that way. Um, we're not really looking to put our own personal money into short, more short-term rentals because that's a little more hands-on for us. And we want our hands-on work to go to the property management group. So I think those are the two big focuses for us. Yeah. I mean, I guess risks would be like, obviously it's with the short-term rental perspective, it is very dependent on the tourism industry. So with things going on and restrictions and travel bans, it, you know, the, when, when that did happen, we saw a lot of people, you know, it, it was, it was pretty rough for a few, few months, right? We, we did what we could to follow the guidelines and only rent to essential workers or people in need of housing. But um, if something like that happens again, there's a risk, but also the other risk is municipalities being a lot more strict on, on how they operate. Like Toronto, you can only have one and it has to be your primary residence that you live in. We're starting to see certain areas around the Niagara region do that. Um, certain areas in Niagara Falls do not permit it, only commercially zoned areas so like tourism, commercial, general commercial. So um, just making sure that you're buying in those specific areas. But we're also, you know, those would probably be the biggest risk. But I know that the city does see it as a big opportunity to bring money into their economy because their people are staying in you know, local neighborhoods and going out to local restaurants and supporting local. And that's what we find the majority of our guests love. That's why they love talking to local hosts. Um, but yeah, definitely, you know, some cities and neighborhoods are not a fan of it. And that, that is a risk that they could turn down the road. So if you are yeah. buying, try to have extra strategies. Yeah. Thanks guys for the chat. I, I get the sense both of you are extremely transparent and open and approachable. And I really hope people that are considering the Niagara market, whether they're doing the same strategy or not, I hope they reach out to you and ask some questions and kind of pick your brain a little bit. Um, I really appreciate the time you've given. Maybe tell us where can people find you online or on social? Where are they best to, to contact you? Sure. So on social, we are Spencer and Ashley, super simple. And our property management company is also, also on Instagram as TravelX Property Management. So you can find us both there. Yeah. And our website is TravelXPropertyManagement.com. Um, pretty easy to find, but yeah, we're, we're most active on the Spencer and Ashley Instagram account. There you go. Instagram guys. And while you're sharing this episode as well, make sure you tag us at Watson Estates. It's been a good chat. I love talking to investors. You guys are killing it the last few years. And I love that you're adapting to, to an evolving market, but thank you for taking the time. If anybody here has any questions, you know, support the channel, hit the like button and leave a comment. We'll be keeping tabs on that as well. Thank you both for your time. And I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it.